Hey everyone and welcome back to our series of daily videos leading up to the 2022 Kent test. First of all, thank you so much for all of the comments, the likes, the shares and the engagement you've been showing on these videos so far. It means a lot to us and we hope that this is really helping you guys out there. Also, we have been listening to some feedback. Now this series was going to just be reasoning, verbal reasoning and non-verbal reasoning and some spatial. But we've had some comments on Facebook, some comments on YouTube, and you guys want some maths and some English as well. So we're going to try and fit some of that in as we go. And that means that today, yes, we are looking at maths. And we're going to be looking at angle turns. And our angle turn questions are very specific, but we've seen them come up before. And they may well come up in the real thing. So we need to know how to tackle these. And the most important thing to know in the box on the screen right now is this top fact. We need to know this. You won't be given this in the test. We have to know that the sum of angles around a point, just like this, one, two, three angles, they always add up to a full turn, which we know is 360 degrees. We need to know that fact. Angles around a point, 360 degrees. For other questions, you might need to know that angles on a straight line are 180, and obviously that right angle is 90. We have to know these facts, guys, else we cannot solve these questions. At the moment, the rest of this box might be looking a bit odd. The point is split into so many equal parts. Well, we'll come on to that now as we move on to the first question. Just a quick one to remind you that we do have spaces in our September Year 5 group. So if your child's going into Year 5 and is sitting the Kent test in September 2023, do get in touch to see how we can help you prepare for that test. So here we have an example of what this question might look like. They're going to give you a turn with a point in the middle. It might be a shape, it might be a clock face as it is in this question here. And it will ask you to calculate the angle between two lines or two points around that turn. Now look at this example here. We can see it's five o'clock. The question might say, what is the smaller angle between the two hands of this clock? And this is the first top tip. We cannot guess. We see a lot of children get these questions in front of them and they get their pencil, and this is awesome. We tell them to jot, jot down things all the time, which is what they have to do. But they start drawing a line like this, uh, trying to mark the angle, and then they're gonna say, well, it's a bit less than 180, but it's a bit more than 90, uh, maybe it's 120, and they just guess. That's probably not going to get us a mark, guys. Estimation is really useful to check an answer's about right, but it's not the way that we're going to get a really accurate answer in this test, and this is where the box comes in handy. So, this point is split into how many equal parts? Well, this is where the context of the question is so important. This question is in the context of a clock face. Now, we know in a clock face there are 12 numbers, which means there are 12 equal parts to make a full turn. So, in the box, I'm going to write down 12. It's split into 12 equal parts. We're not finished yet. Therefore, one part is equal to, here's what we've got to do, guys. We've got to work out what one of these parts here is equal to as an angle. What is that angle there as it turns from 12 to one? And the way we do this is 360, the full turn, divided by 12, because that's how many equal parts there are in the full turn. And we can use our times table knowledge here to know that 36 divided by 12 is three. So if it's 360, it's going to be 10 times bigger, which is 30. So we know now, because we've calculated it, we've not guessed, we've calculated that each jump here is 30 degrees. Have we answered the question? No, of course not. There's multiple steps to this. It's a Kent test question. So we know that the angle would be 30 degrees from 12 to 1, but our question is asking us from 12 to 5. So we actually have five lots of 30 to run through. So if we start at 12 and we rotate round to five, we have five jumps. Each jump is 30 degrees. So now we can actually accurately calculate the answer, which is five lots of 30 degrees. The answer to this question is 150 degrees. Hopefully you can see how we can calculate it. We do not guess. Okay, so now we're going to jump straight into a test style question here with multiple choice answers, and we're going to use the same technique we just talked about. Luckily for us, it's still a clock face, okay? So we know that there are still 12 individual parts to this full turn that's going to help us out a lot. This clock is missing its hands, classic hand test. It's not even going to give you the face with the hands on it. You've got to do it yourself. It's currently seven o'clock. What is the larger angle between the two hands? There's loads of ways here this is trying to trick us, but the first thing is let's just draw in a rough seven o'clock so that's just up to 12 that's down to seven okay so we're at seven o'clock what is the larger angle between the two hands can you see how there are two angles here 
There's a smaller angle here from 12 to 7, but the larger angle is going this way. And now we can use estimation to help. That's more than half a turn. So our angle has to be greater than 180 degrees, okay, when we calculate it. So we can use that to check later. But let's use the box in the top right to help us. The sum of the angles around the point is 360 degrees. That's never changing. The point is split into 12 equal parts because it's a clock face. There are 12 equal parts going around. Therefore, 360 divided by 12, you may remember, is 30 degrees. Now we've got that unit measurement for one part of the turn. We can just use that now, count up the total number of parts, and then that's our answer. So we have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven parts. Well, we know each part there was 30 degrees. Seven lots of 30 degrees is 210 degrees. I'm just going to check really quickly that that makes sense. Is it greater than 180? Yes. So it looks like it's about right. We're going to put C as our answer, and we're going to move on. Okay guys, different context now, but we still know that 360 degrees is our key number for the angles around a point. Let's take a look at this question. The arrow is pointing to one corner of a regular hexagon. This is really important. Because it's a regular hexagon, we know that the angles from each turn to each corner are going to be the same. If it was not a regular hexagon, our method would not work because they are not equal parts. It is a regular hexagon though, so we can assume very safely that they are equal turns going around this hexagon. So here's where the question differs slightly. It's pointed to a corner of a regular hexagon. If the arrow turns anti-clockwise until it points to A, how many degrees has it turned through? Well, we know what normally would happen if children didn't know this technique. They'd go from A, they'd start drawing a line around, they'd go to there, they'd say, oh, is, is that roughly, uh, it's over 180, is it 200 and something? we wouldn't get an accurate answer. We know what to do. The sum of the angles around a point is 360 degrees. The point is split into six equal parts because you can count the corners around a hexagon. Therefore, one part, which we're going to just put in here with dotted line, this turn here for the arrow, one part is 360 divided by those six equal parts. 36 divided by six is six, 10 times bigger. Each turn here, is 60 degrees. So for the arrow to go from E to D, that would be 60 degrees, but the question is not asking us to go to D, it's asking us to go to A. So we need another 60 degrees here, we need another 60 degrees here, and one final lot of 60 degrees here. That's four lots of 60 degrees, therefore the answer is 240 degrees. With this method, we're gonna solve these questions accurately every single time. The answer here is going to be B. Okay guys, so I'm gonna set you up on a question that you're going to answer yourselves and you'll notice that this question has inverted the way it's asked it. Let me show you what I mean. The arrow is pointing to one corner of a regular hexagon. We can see it's pointing up here. It's not labeled, that doesn't matter. If the arrow turns clockwise through 240 degrees, what corner will it be pointing to? Can you see how it's inverted? It's swapped, it's giving you the degrees you need to tell me where it ends up. Well, you're gonna have a go at this one, guys. I'm gonna set you up here. The point is split into six equal parts. We know 360 divided by six is 60 degrees. So every single turn it makes to a new point is 60 degrees. Can you turn that arrow clockwise 240 degrees and tell me in the comments section down below what letter do you get to? Hopefully you found this useful and you enjoyed having a bit of maths in this series. Keep your eyes peeled because we are coming to you every single day until the 2022 Kent test. Thanks, guys. See you next time.